We know that in machine learning, we have three types of learning or ways in which a machine learns. Previously, we discussed about supervised learning in which machine learns under supervision with labeled data. For example, predicting several values based on learning. Unsupervised learning, machine learns without any supervision or we can say that it has unlabeled data. Learn by recognizing the patterns of the data. We can say that clustering same items in a particular group. Now we are going to discuss about reinforcement machine learning, the working process of it and several applications. So reinforcement learning is advanced machine learning in which machine learns in a different way than supervised and unsupervised learning which we discussed. In reinforcement learning, there is an agent which continuously learns from the environment interacting with it based on the action of the events or we can say the action of the agent that has been done it is rewarded positively or negatively which improves the performance of the agent to understand the environment and the problem and an example of it could be a self-drive car now here are some terms which you might think that what are all this environment action state reward and agent no need to worry, we will discuss about it one by one. So first comes this environment. That what is this environment actually? It is a space in which an agent operates and learn. Generally, random or stochastic. Next comes this reward. Reward is a feedback to an agent for its action. Now who is this particular agent actually? This agent is we can say an entity that explores the environment. So we can say that it is an entity now state what is meant by state it is a current situation of the agent or situation returned by the environment it can be anything the current situation in which the agent is operating or which is returned by the environment next comes is the actions that what do we mean by actions actions are the moves taken by the agent based on its learning Whatever the agent has learned, based on that learning, it takes some actions or we can say moves from the environment, from its learning from the environment. Now, reinforcement learning is basically based on hit and trial. Where the agent is not instructed about the environment and the action needed to be taken by the agent. It learns through the feedback from the environment, that is the reward. That if it's positive, then okay, that learning is correct. And if it's negative, then it is incorrect. That kind of thing. For example, in the self-driving car, agent receive a negative reward if the car gets an accident or it gets a hit. And receives a positive reward, we can say, if it clears the goal without hitting or without abruption. Now, to build an optimal policy of self-driving cars not to get hit, the agent has to explore more and more state to have to maximize its reward. This is called exploration. This is called the exploration versus the exploitation trade-off. That means an agent has to balance both to get a reward. That means a value also. Now here we use another term that is policy. Now what is meant by this policy? This policy is nothing but it is actually a strategy mapped up by the agent for the next action based on the current state so it is basically we can say a strategy mapping by the agent for the next action based on the current state in which the agent is there another term which i want to discuss is value that what is the value now it is a long-term feature reward that an agent should receive without the discount factor and the opposite short-term reward so it is basically we can say a future reward which having a long term value so this is about all the working that is happening in the reinforcement next we are going to see some applications about reinforcement so some applications which can be is in robotics in robotics for industrial automation reinforcement learning comes into play game playing that is the ai vision games and all that their reinforcement learning comes into play in business to make decision traffic signal control also robotics control 
there are certain applications of the reinforcement learning and it is quite different you can see from the supervised and unsupervised learning also next we are going to discuss about the approaches to implement the reinforcement learning so the approaches to implement the reinforcement learning there are three ways to implement that and the very first is value based In value based the value based approach is used to maximize the value function at a state under any policy or agent except a long term return at current state of any particular policy that means a value based approach is used to maximize the value function in value based concept this happen second we have policy based in policy based approach agent try to come up with such a policy that it can gain maximum rewards in future without using any value function that means in this no use of value function happens in policy based what it does it comes up with policy based approach to gain the maximum rewards so that in future without losing any value function so that it doesn't lose the value function now two types of policies which are there the very first type of the policy is deterministic in this action of policy is same for any state that means same policy action will be applied for any state and second is stochastic in this action of policy is determined by probability that what type of policy will be there and what type of policy approach will agent apply that is based on probability whereas is deterministic the policy or the action of policy is same for every state and third is or we can say the last way to implement the reinforcement learning is model based in model based you need to create a virtual model for each environment and the agent explores that environment to learn it that means for separate learning visions we can say we have to create different virtual models there so these are the approaches to implement the reinforcement learning and now we are going to discuss about the types of reinforcement learning and that is broadly classified into two types that is positive and the next type is negative positive it impacts positively on the behavior of the agent and increases the strength and frequency of the behavior of agent in the positive reinforcement which is quite obvious also if the impact of we can say the reward will be positive for the behavior of the agent that it would definitely increase the strength and the frequency of the behavior whereas in negative reinforcement it is opposite to positive and more effective than positive as it increases the tendency that the specific behavior will occur again and again by avoiding the negative condition that means here negative condition is avoided that means we can say not only in positive reinforcement it is better because of the specific behavior it will occur again and again by avoiding the negative conditions which are there so there are two types the first type is positive and the other type is negative now we are going to discuss about a reinforcement learning algorithm and the two important learning models in reinforcement learning first is markov decision process that we will discuss now only and another is q learning that we will discuss in our next video so now let us switch to what is markov decision process in markov decision process we can say that the agent constantly interacts with the environment and performs several actions for each action performed the environment responds and generate a new reward and the state as its feedback to the agent the environment is fully observable environment you can see and formally describes as markov decision process that is md Markov decision process is used to describe the environment for reinforcement learning and almost all the RL problems may be formalized using MDP only that where an agent is constantly interacting with the environment and for every correct action we can say every each action perform the environment responds and generate a reward also and the state as its feedback to the agent that how it has well performed so this is used in the environment of reinforcement learning in almost all the rl problems which are there now a markov decision process needs to satisfy markov property also
Now the question arises is, what is this Markov property? It says that future is independent of the past given the present. Means if the agent at the current state S1, we can say if this particular operation performing is at S1 state and performs an action A1, then move to the state S2. Then the state transition, the transitions which happen from S1 to S2 depends only on the current state and the future action. It doesn't depend upon the past actions which are there or the rewards of several state which are there. For example, you can take an example of chess game also. Player only focuses on the current state and the future action, not about the past action which has been taken. So that is only the mark of property. Next what comes is mark of process and chain. Now this Markov process is actually a memoryless process which consists of sequence of random states. We can say S1, S2, S3 and so on with the Markov property which is there, the property I just explained to you where previous action rewards or state doesn't depend. What depends is the current state and the future action that is going to be taking place. So there are several processes we can say randomless and memoryless it is that is S1, S2, S3 with the Markov property. Now where S can be uh, said as the Markov chain tuple, it consists of S and P. Where S we know that is a finite set of states which are there and P is the state transition probability. So this is actually the Markov chain tuple. which consists of S and P, where S is the finite states and P is the state transition probability. And next comes is the reward process. Now what is the reward tuple which is there of Markov? So reward tuple consists of S, P, R and gamma, where S is the finite state, P is the state transition probability, R is the reward and this gamma, this is actually the discount factor. So this is all about the Markov reward process which is there. It consists of tuples which we also discussed. The Markov rules also which we also incurs the chain rule. That is the memoryless process also. And what is the property? That is any agent in the current state S1 if it is performing an action A1 and then moves to the transition from S1 to S2, then it only depends on the current state and the future actions we can say which needed to be take place. That means it doesn't depend on the past actions, rewards or states which are there. It doesn't depend on them. This is Markov property. So by the end of this video, we conclude that Markov decision process provides a mathematical framework for modeling in decision making situation where outcomes are partially random and partially under control of any decision maker. In the next video, we will be discussing about Q-learning algorithm in reinforcement learning.